The other day you said that uh, Tarion would be running back, starting running back and play the game like tomorrow or whatever. Uh, did Jarrell having missed, Jarrell says having missed the spring hasn't affected him at all. Do you feel it has? I don't really think so, you know, because he is someone that, uh, you know, obviously he's going to take care of his body. That's, that's never going to be an issue. Uh, he's going to be in shape. Uh, so I don't know that it affected him negatively, but I also know it didn't help him because he does have to improve. He has to get better at things. We've talked about his maturity over and over. It's the same conversation I've had with him. So the fact that he wasn't here didn't hurt him, but I think from the negative standpoint, it didn't help him. It didn't help him for, for where he wants to get to and the level he wants to play at. Uh, now he's had a, a foot injury here that we x-rayed, it's negative. You know, but again, um, you know, he, he, he understands to get to where he expects to get to and where he should get to with his ability level, it, ha it certainly hasn't helped him, the path that, that he's kind of gone down. And in the meantime, Terry Young continues to progress. Yeah, I mean, he's steady. Every day he's out here, um, and he's explosive now. I mean, you know, he's a, uh, he's, a, he's a unique little ball carrier, a unique little back that we have tremendous confidence in. But in this conversation, you and I both know both of them are going to play a lot. So this is all just preseason conversation, August 13th or 14th conversation. They're all going to play. That's the nature of the position. Uh, given that uh, Austin was uh, the quarterback in the two-man drill with the ones and Lamar with the twos, did that suggest that Austin, because of his passing ability, would be the guy in that situation? I don't, you know, that, that probably does. Um, uh, you know, there's a reason he was out there in the first two-minute situation. But it's very close. It's very close. I mean, if there's even the threat of, and Lamar can throw it. I mean, you can watch. I mean, Lamar's made a lot of, a lot of uh, progress throwing the ball, and we really are comfortable with him. Uh, you know, if there's a threat of run, at all, whether that's scrambling or the clock dictates we can run option, or run the ball, it'll be Lamar. You know, if we get to that point where it's just throw it, throw it, throw it, throw it, there's a chance it could be Austin. Uh, you know, it's certainly not a negative reflection on Lamar. Plus, we want to look at Austin. You know, Austin hasn't been around as long as Lamar. You know, again, that's another one of those August 14th conversations of who the first quarterback is in there. We know what that's going to be. It's going to be who's ever available. You talked about exactness. Uh, Tail makes the interception and kills the, the two-minute drive, <laughs> and then he runs out of bounds. Yeah. Well, first of, of all, he should get down immediately. Right. Down right. immediately. We have enough points to win the game. So that's the whole example of doing this because all and you know we can do two minute now more than we've ever done we're set up to do two minute you have to do it so those situations come up you can talk about it in that meeting room all you want and i told them the example we had we played at the university of washington i think it was 1996 or 95 and um, um, i was actually the head coach for lou because lou had had neck surgery and a little corner named alan rossum from dallas who ended up playing the nfl for a long time we're up by one point against washington late in the game Washington has the ball, kind of the game, the last drive of the game, we thought. Allen intercepts the ball. We're up by one. He runs it back for a touchdown. Doesn't take a knee. Now we kick the extra point. We're up by eight. Now Washington gets the ball back with 40-some seconds left in that game, and they're driving to potentially score and go for two and tie, tie, uh, and, and go for two and tie the game. So I tried to relay that one exact example. You know, if you're up by four or five, but always the risk is you're going to cough the ball up and give them the ball back. So yardage isn't worth it, points isn't worth it. Get down and protect the ball. But you have to do it. He didn't even know what I was talking about when I first jumped him. You know, it's just, it's one of those spur of the moment things. There's always a flip side, but was it nice to see the defense uh, get two subs back to back? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, I don't, you know, it's competitive. You know, I, every day I'll take just a competition drill from one-on-one -on -one drills, all these drills. I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's as competitive as we've been out here just on, Guys competing against each other and units competing against each other. B. John Parker, great shirt. Came in, I guess, January 14. Uh, obviously, now he's, he's contending for a starting, yeah. starting job. How has he progressed? He's a little tentative. You know, he knows what to do. Uh, you know, he's the guy that you're kind of looking for with the height that we haven't had. He's just tentative. He's tentative. And again, um, it's no excuse that, well, our offense does a lot of things because he's seen our offense now for two springs. Uh, and, and, and so uh, he, he's, a he's a little tentative. 
but he's, he continues to work, he continues to grind it, he's not thin-skinned, you can jump him. I'm pleased with him, but right now, uh, he's way, way too tentative to, to, to go win.